I'm Zoe de la Hunty Light, and it's almost becoming a problem how much Sons of the Forest I've played. One moment the clock reads 8 something am, the next it's 10 pm, and my fiance is asking me if I've moved since he left for work. But during that time, I've discovered a bunch of things that made my life on the cannibal and mutant infested Rich People Island a whole lot easier. So here they are. I play Sons of the Forest a lot on Steam Deck as it's a feat of modern engineering and I'm a sucker for handhelds, so here's a few tips to improve the gameplay for those of you who play or want to know how to play Sons of the Forest on your Steam Deck. First, your Steam Deck is likely going to crash a couple of times, sorry to break it to you. For me, this always happened after entering a cave or a bunker or leaving said cave or bunker. So I suggest keeping some tarp on you and setting up a shelter outside of cave entrances so you can save and spare yourself time wasted backtracking in case it does crash. Obviously set almost everything to low and don't forget to remap sprint and sneak to toggle on the thumbsticks to save you getting a sprained thumb from holding those buttons down. When you first run into the 3D printer, I recommend using it to print out a mask. This will be of limited use if you've already gone ham on the cannibals and have made yourself an enemy of them, but if you somehow haven't yet, keep listening. This resin mask will make the weaker cannibals think you're friendly and dissuade them from attacking you. As long as you haven't attacked them first, this should work. Like if you meet them wandering in the forest, the resin mask will actually work. But if not, then remember to de-aggro them before masking up. They have a pretty good memory, so just be wary of that. Also, the resin mask won't work on the cannibal chiefs with the golden masks. You'll need a golden mask for that, which is a late game item, so good luck. I adore Virginia and all her extra limbs, so in an effort to get everyone to treat her right, here's how you can raise your affinity with Virginia and get her as a follower, which also will secure the good ending that includes her. No spoilers here, don't worry. You'll want to kill enemies Virginia points out to you, light any fires she's standing near so she can warm herself up, chill near her without any of your weapons drawn, watch her do her ballet, revive her when she goes down, and build crop plots which she'll happily eat from as she does seem to prefer those to drying racks. You can tell if Virginia is becoming fond of you because she'll start to exhibit certain behaviours. These include getting close to you and standing still in contemplation of you before fleeing, sitting on the ground near you or your base, bringing you items, standing near unlit fires, gesturing to the player to lead them to nearby points of interests like caves, dig sites, weapons and gear, giving you a thumbs up, and finally, and the biggest clue that she likes you, Virginia will follow you around for a long time before going on her way. Kelvin can sulk, and therefore you can upset him. When Kelvin is tired, you'll be able to see him resting in between his tasks, often lounging in the sun and watching the clouds. Originally, this pissed me off quite a lot because I needed help building stuff, but it turns out Kelvin does actually need these breaks. If you don't give him enough breaks yourself or pull him into combat too frequently, Kelvin will become upset, which means he's less productive. That will just mean he'll tend to not do what you ask him to do, so make sure to give him breaks. Thank God he doesn't maliciously target important trees when he's in this mood, though. Hunting animals can be difficult. Some of them are small, fast and too smart for traps, or if you're like me, you're too impatient or too hungry to use those traps. In that case, you'll want to enable the beaver approach and chuck logs at seagulls, rabbits and deer to catch them or at least stun them while you deliver the finishing blow. It's more merciful than needling them with arrows. Promise. Be very careful when you equip the golden armour. 
Like other armor, it will just automatically remove any previous armor you're wearing. However, if any of that armor has sustained damage, it will be completely destroyed upon donning the golden armor. Be careful. Exploring the depths of some godforsaken cave or bunker and realizing you're on your last set of batteries is a nightmare. If you've managed to find the weapon torch that affixes to the barrel of your pistol, then you have slightly less of a reason to be scared, as the weapon torch never runs out of batteries. Or at least that's as far as I can tell, and I did use it to explore an entire cave system without any issues bar the mutants trying to kill me. This may be a bug that's fixed in future patches, but for now, go ham with it, you light junkie. Now, unlike the weapon torch, this is definitely a bug, so by the time you watch this, it could be fixed. The sled will negate any fall or collision damage. So, if you happen to slide off the side of a cliff or bump into a cannibal, then don't worry about it as it's actually the bit after the collision that you need to fret about. The 3D printed sled also floats and therefore can be used to traverse water, which is especially handy in rivers if you need to get downstream quickly. Although there is a kayak paddle on the shore, unfortunately you can't pick it up and use it on the sled. Maybe that will be possible in a future update though. In my beginner's tips video, I told you how Kelvin has fish sense, bit of a weird superpower, but did you know he also has arrow sense? Once you're done fighting and you no longer have to worry about mutants or cannibals attacking Kelvin and downing him, you can ask Kelvin to bring you any arrows from the forest floor. He won't pull them from bodies, but he's really good at finding the ones that missed their quarry. He returns them in stacks of five and will just keep looking if there are more out there. The chief cannibals, sometimes decked in golden masks, are a word I can't say on YouTube, otherwise this video will get demonetized. But safe to say, I despise them. They are very hard to fight using only melee and still a pain if you resort to ranged, but there is an easy-ish trick to make them go bye-bye in a big explosion, if you're an accurate enough shot. When you see them wielding the motor with the propeller that usually slices you to bits, aim with an arrow or a bullet at that motor. If you manage to shoot it, it'll explode and instantly kill the beefcake wielding it. It's very satisfying. This is more of an interesting detail than a tip, but hey, might help you avoid it when you're in a bunker. Lighting a fire underground in one of the Hollow Springs structures will set off the sprinklers and an alarm. Yes, as in water sprinklers that will put out your fire. This will also render your molotovs useless, so think carefully before you light up. Plus, the alarm is just really annoying, so if you're in brain, I'd recommend avoiding that. Finally, I don't have thalassophobia, but I do hate it when I notice a shark or orca making a beeline towards me when I'm swimming out in the open. If you have grenades on you, then this is what you're going to want to do. Find yourself a piece of ground or haul yourself up onto the emergency raft and bring out a grenade. Cook it for four Mississippis, then chuck it in the direction of the large fish in question and it will explode. Grenades do explode underwater, but they sink, hence the cooking. And don't forget to skin the giant beasts. There you go. Those are the advanced tips that you need to know to survive that little bit longer in Sons of the Forest. I am utterly addicted to it right now, so be sure to drop any more tips you have, especially for building or avoiding slash unlifing cannibals in the comments below, as those are the next two Sons of the Forest videos I'm planning to come out with. How are you finding Sons of the Forest so far, and is there anything else you'd like to see a video on? I'm thinking a lore video on Virginia and the Puftons, as I love her so much. Let me know in the comments. Also, please make sure you're being nice to Virginia, or I will hunt you down and make you pay for the hurt you've done to her, because I adore her.
And finally, if you've actually made it this far, thanks so much for watching and make sure you subscribe to Eurogamer and like this video for more Sons of the Forest videos from yours truly, Zoe Delahunty Light, as we have a new video out almost every single day. Now, I'm going to go and let Kelvin have a rest as I don't want him to go sulky on me, so I'll see you lot next time.